OK, so um, air photos and also uh, satellite images capture the reflections uh, of the light in different wavelengths. And also we, we store those uh, reflections by using a rust date model. So in most cases, we're using a rust date model. Uh, so if we review that, we have learned uh, in the last week talking about rust data. So basically, rust data is a set of the continuous uh, model. Uh, okay, so a set of the continuous model and each cell, so that means each cell has one unique number. So each cell has one unique number. So if we refer to the table, so each cell has one unique number. And and it covers the entire state study area. So it is a set of the continuous uh, cells, rows, and columns has a single value. Each cell has a single value that represents the characteristic of the spatial phenomenon. And that number is called digital number. OK, so our satellite images and those photos are using a rust data model to, to store the reflections in different wavelengths. So before we <coughs> continue, so I just want to mention the disadvantage and the advantage of using Rust data model. So uh, using Rust data model, the technology is super inexpensive and also is pretty everywhere. So nowadays we can even use our cell phones to take photos and those will saved in the Rust data model. And the data structure is pretty simple. So if you remember the difference between the raster and also vector data, so you will know that uh, the raster data, the structure is pretty simple. So each cell has a unique digital value. However, uh, the raster data are pretty large. OK, so if you are going to representing, going to represent the same uh, structure, if I using raster data, or if I using vector data, so the vector data will be smaller. So it's it can save our uh, storage. And I'm not sure this one is true, but someone considered the images are less pretty than vector. Okay, okay. So especially when you're talking about DEM or something like that, so someone may prefer using vector data to create maps or visualizations rather than using rust data. And also the projections. Uh, so we know that projections are required for all the spatial data. And also map projection is a process with that we convert 3D objects into 2D objects that will generate distortions. And also for Rust data, uh, the distortion will have huge impact uh, or have more impact than the vector data. So it will alter the size and the shape of the original input layer. OK, um, and lastly, and also I, I would think this probably is the most important disadvantage is that uh, most spatial data analysis tools, they only support vector data. So there are, there are a bunch of few Rust data analysis tools, so which we will learn later this week, this semester. But there are more spatial analysis tools for the vect data. OK. Um, and the Rust data photos and those images, they are stored uh, in, by using the Rust data model. So basically, um, we use a set of the pixels to store the reflections in different wavelengths. OK. So for example, we use uh, one set of the rust layer to store the reflections in this wavelength, for example, near infrared. We use another image to store the reflections of the start area in the red band. And we use another image to reflect to store the reflections in the green band. OK, so each, each value of the pixel will be the reflections in that band. OK, so for example, this pixel, this location on this band, that is reflection on the near infrared. For the same location, that pixel on a different band will record reflection on the red band. 
And also this pixel on the green band will record the same position, but reflections on the green band. Okay, so a single band will consist a set of pixels that have the digital value that is the reflections in the same range of the wavelengths. And the color images, so the reason that we see the colors from our photos and also from our satellite images contains three digital values, okay, for each pixels, and we call those three bands. Okay, color images, so nowadays we, we can see those colors either printed images or the, on the digital screens that require three bands of three digital numbers for each single pixel. So normally, uh, so for example, for this single pixel, it contains a reflection in this band, and also for same location, another pixel contains the reflections in this band, and also another pixel that contains the reflection in this band. So all three together will generate a colorful image. So we require three bands. So all three bands together will generate a colorful image. Okay, again, so each Picasso has its own digital number representing the reflection value of its corresponding locations in that specific range of the wavelengths. And all three Band. We, we three bands together will generate a colorful image. Okay, so normally the band that collect in the red band, we the red band if we display that as red, and the green band we display that as green, and the blue band we display that as blue. Okay. Okay, so they are displayed as green, red, and also blue band. Okay, so the red band displayed as red color. The images in the green band are displayed as green color. And images from the blue band are displayed as blue color. And by doing that, we will have a colorful image. Okay, so that means that if the object reflects more in red band, it will show the red on the final image. If the object have more reflect more green band, it will show more green on the image. And then similar for the blue band. Okay, so that is what we call it true color image. Okay, so we're using red to display the reflection in the red band, use green to display the reflection in the green band, and use blue color to to represent display the reflection in the blue band so that's called true color image we also have a false color image okay so the false color image is very interesting so if you look at this uh, chart that might be easier to understand so the false color image means that we drop the blue band Okay, we drop the blue band. The reason is because uh, we can get more information from the near infrared band. However, our human eyes cannot see the reflection from in near infrared. So we capture that reflection by our sensors and we display the reflection by using red. Okay, we display the reflection of the near infrared by using red. And we display the red band by using green, and we display the green band by using blue. Okay, and why we want, and we just drop the red band. So in the false color images, we don't see reflections from the blue, from the blue band. And here, this is a true color image. We can see the vegetables are green because they were displayed as green on the true color images. However, on the false color image, it will be displayed 
as red. Okay, so why they are displayed as red? If you remember the spectral reflection uh, profile for the uh, for the vegetables, so they have huge reflections on the green band for vegetables, a uh, large, but, and they have very very high reflection in the near infrared. Okay, so that is for the this is for the vegetable. So this is the green band. So that's that means that in the true color they. Uh, they have more reflection in the green band, but they have even more the highest reflection in the near infrared band. So that's why that when we see the uh, vegetables in the false color images, they are displayed as red, and the water will appear as black. Because if you remember the water, the water has high reflections in the blue band and also almost zero reflections in the near infrared band. So that's why water will show as black. And false color images are very useful in some cases. So for example, here uh, we can see more details of the of our vegetables that we can see. So those are the green vegetables, those are the harvest vegetables, and those are fully grown vegetables. Okay. So we can get more information f rather than using the true color image. And also some cases, uh, it will give us a very clear uh, boundary that between waters and also vegetables, so between different objects. So here we can see because water and also vegetables have very unique, huge difference, uh, high differences in the reflecting in the near infrared band. So that, that's why that we can uh, identify the boundary between water and also vegetable. So those are some examples of using the false color image. 